Ah, you're here once again. It's good to see you as always. Welcome. I'm Take Care Thor Kelson, your host. And, uh, well, we'd like to uh, invite you to subscribe, carry on watching, and please feel free to leave a comment and follow us on Twitter and read it. Now, in the north, well, there's uh, a tradition that many still practice to this day of uh, holding mass on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. And it should be said that uh, back in the pagan days, during the great feast of Yule, that in fact, in the middle of winter, well, New Year's Day was in fact what's now Christmas Day. However, after the conversion to Christianity, as you know, New Year's Day is a week after Christmas Day. And uh, this story begins the night before, the evening of New Year's Eve. And, uh, well, it starts in the household of a woman, a widow, who was well liked in her home village, although she was known for being rather forgetful. Now, she was a, ch uh, a keen churchgoer, and uh, she'd uh, decided, since it was a Saturday night, that she wanted to get up in very good time to go and attend the service in the morning. And therefore, she'd gone to bed, particularly early, and uh, the lamp that she'd used to light her way, well, she'd forgotten to refill it with tallow. And as a result, when she went to bed and fell asleep, it burned low and uh, was a extinguished very quickly indeed. Now not long after, the woman woke up to find herself in complete darkness and quite forgetting that she'd neglected to uh, refill her lamp. She thought it had burned all the way through and it was the next morning. And although it was dark outside, well, she thought nothing of that, because after all, it was midwinter. And therefore, she got herself ready, put on her best dress, and um, set off for church. And in fact, she had no idea that the hour was still short of midnight. So, she arrived at the church thinking that it was New Year's morning, but uh, ah. when she opened the door, well, she found there was already a congregation inside, seated along the wooden pews. And well, she found a place, sat down, and uh, began to warm herself up. For after all, it was freezing cold outside. And she began to look around her for some familiar faces. But she couldn't find any. The people she normally sat next to simply weren't there. Instead, well, there were all kinds of people and, um, well, in uh, one or two cases, she knew that she knew them from somewhere, but she couldn't quite put her finger on it. And then a priest, he uh, began to speak. And the priest himself, well, she, uh, <clears throat> she couldn't place him for a while. It certainly wasn't the usual priest, but uh, then finally, after several minutes, it came to her. This was old Asmund's son, and uh, he died oh, a few years before, when the cart he was riding 
who've fallen through some ice on a frozen lake. And she looked about her. Well, finally, she started to remember who uh, some of the other worshippers were. And then, just behind her, she noticed a lady who'd lived in the house next door for many long years. Yeah, um, Olaf's dos here. Um, Thora, that was it. And Thora, well, of course, she'd been dead. She dropped dead when she was spinning. Ooh, five summers ago now. And Thora, well, she looked at the woman with sad, dead eyes. And she said, you'd best leave here now, because... On the stroke of midnight, when the doors will close, you'll never leave again. And the woman took her advice. She wasted no time in hurrying out. And just as she was exiting those portals, the doors slammed shut and very nearly crushed her heel. However, she lived to sell the tale, which we have reached the end of, and therefore, I'd like to thank you all for listening, and uh, once more, Happy New Year to you all. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Thank you.